So I've been waving my hand at something, and maybe you've gone along with it and just said, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense, or it should work. But I, I want to talk about it a little bit. We have translator here times rotator. We combine them together using matrix multiplication, and we stick in this operation, and then we apply that single operation to each vertex. But I really didn't talk about why this works, why I can take two matrices and combine them into one. I've kind of glossed over that. And we've done that with the multiplication operation. And so, uh, before I do that, however, that's, that's, that's going to be the discussion for the next few videos. Uh, before I do that, I've realized I've kind of ripped you off a little bit. Because I showed you via uh, these tools, actually I think it was on this one. We did the uh, rotation, remember we brought this down to a .7. And if we bring this up to a point seven, if we set all these to the sine slash cosine, this is going to be the ne negative of it. And bring this to a point seven. You can see our house is rotated. All right, and we've talked about these basis vectors and how I changed the basis vectors up. That's going to change the resulting vectors, and that's all we did here. We changed this basis vector. We rotated it over here, and we changed this basis vector and rotated it over there. And since they did a perfect well, almost perfect, and we need more digits to be perfect, but perfect enough for our purposes. Uh, since we did a quote-unquote perfect rotation here, then the whole entire house rotated as well. And if we go into 3D mode here, you can see we have uh, rotated our house, so to say. So that's kind of kind of fun. And again, I can now translate it, that sort of thing. Okay, so I haven't really talked about scaling, all right? Uh, let me pause the video and set, reset all these back to where they should be. Okay, here's our outline of our house again, and we can see it here in 3D as well. Um, but let's stick with the two-dimensional one, because uh, what I'm about to teach you is learning it in 2D is, is the easiest, and then going to the third dimension is uh, straightforward. Remember this view here? This is where we started out with. We had this vector, which is a combination, a linear combination of these two vectors, and now we back down to a two by two matrix and a two dimensional vector here. And so if I to bring this up, let's say point one point five, and take this to a one point three. I'm just trying to come up with something a little more interesting than one and one. Uh, just a review, and I hope this is a review, we're basically saying 1.5 times this basis vector plus 1.3 times this basis vector. And this is what we call a linear combination. We are multiplying the scalar components of this vector here against the uh, two basis vectors there, and then we add the result. So 1.5 times this basis vector, that's going to be 1.5 of this basis vector, and then it's 1.3 of this basis vector, so 1.3 of that basis vector. And if I grab this resulting vector there and move it over here, you can see simple vector addition, this plus this, gives us a result of what we see behind us. Hopefully that's straightforward and review. Um, now let me clear all that off for now, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna let's just grab, and we saw this before, but again, let me just, it's 1.3 times this basis vector. But if I grab that basis vector, sorry, <laughs> it, it's 1.3 times this basis vector. If I grab the y basis vector and move it up, let's just say two-ish. Well, now it's 1.3 times this, and so we've, we've essentially scaled that vector. Up. Our resulting vector, we scaled it up, and we can we can scale it to the right like so, and we can do weird things like that that we've talked about. We can we don't have to just modify the the non-zero component. We can grab the zero component as well, and that's how we were doing rotations. Going back to this view here, um, actually, let's go back here. I'm going to reset all these back to where they should be. Zero, and bring this one back to zero. Okay, so I'm going. I guess now we're in the X here. Let me bring this to a one. We'll stick with the X. I'm I'm scaling in the X direction, if you can see that. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm scaling there. And I'm I'm scaling in this direction too. I'm doing a negative scale, but I'm still doing a a scale in the X direction. I think it makes more sense if we see multiple vectors together. And for now in this view, I mean again we can just think in two D so we don't need to worry about all these 
three-dimensional uh, components, if you would. I there we go. Pretend they're not there. They are dead to us, right? We have two by we have two-dimensional vectors and a two by two matrix, but that's the, going the third dimension is the same. Anyway, I'm going to just like I was doing over here. We can scale in the x. I'm going to grab here, and I'm going to scale in the x here, and, and pause the video and think, if I grab this slider and move it right or left, how is that going to change the figure we see here? In fact, it would be good to put the value 2 here and see how that changes the result. Pause the video, work that out, think through it, and come back. You're not doing it, are you? I hope you did do it. It's useful if you did. Um, all right, let me grab this. Moving it out, moving it out. You see what happens to our house here? All right, we're scaling all those vectors. Notice these vectors are taking a negative value of the basis vector, so that's why they're pointing this direction. But if I just make this vector larger, well, then it's a larger negative value for them, and then the positive ones are positive values as well. So going back to this, you see this single blue vector? You could almost think of it as this single blue vector right here. And as I scale this out, this single blue vector is getting longer because the x basis uh, vector is getting longer as well. And same idea here is we're scaling in the X. Well, guess what happens if we grab this slider and move it down? You probably don't even need to pause the video for it. Let's move it down though. And see, look, we're getting a very short house. We have a short and fat house. Let's look at the third dimension and take out the vectors there. Look at that house. Look at that. It's a nice, cute rambler, right? Now, maybe we want to do something. We find in Wreck-It Ralph, we want to scale it up, all right? Scale it off the screen. All right, let's fly the camera around a little bit so you can see it. We've scaled that that uh, house. It's really tall and thin now. All right. So I hope that's pretty straightforward. In fact, uh, graphics courses usually teach scaling before they teach rotation, but I guess I wanted to teach rotation before scaling. Anyway, scaling not. Uh, I hope that's pretty intuitive what's going on there. Let me just again go to the 3D view. Scale, scale. Notice scaling in the X does not affect this vector here because this vector is taking nothing from the from the uh, X there. It's zero times this basis vector. So as I change that basis vector, nothing magical happens. All right, straightforward. Hope hopefully that makes sense.